What's up, desktopers? Xavier Wills here for Desktop Bodybuilding, and we are back for another daily bodybuilding news update. And today we're discussing the 20 year old bodybuilding phenom, which could be about to shock the world. Phil Heath, his new documentary, we've got a release date on that. And is it an award winning documentary? Dennis James in hospital, Puerto Rico Pro cancelled, Tony Burton's crazy one year transformation. We've got updates from Ross Flanagan, the owner of Flavor Gang, Keon Pearson and an Aussie that's about to take the classic physique uh, world by storm. We've got all that plus much more coming up in this video, guys. Hope you enjoy it. What's up, desktopers? Xavier Wills here for Desktop Bodybuilding and back for another Bodybuilding News Live. And if you are guys are watching live, get your questions and comments in right now and I'll answer them at the end of this video or maybe enduring it as well. Also, if you are watching on replay, get your comments in. Also, give the video a thumbs up, smash that like button. Also, subscribe and hit the notification bell button. That way, you won't miss out on any more Bodybuilding News Lives. And uh, we've got a ton for you guys today. I'm going to get into some physique updates to start this one off. I'll share my screen with you guys, and you'll be able to see all the physique updates as I have them on my screen right now. And the first physique update, actually, we're not going to go to physique updates first. We're going to go to the Puerto Rico Pro. So I saw this posted by Stanimal Stan Delonge, who's planning on doing that Puerto Rico Pro, which this weekend, it would have been 10 weeks out. So 10 and a half weeks from now, this was posted by Bodybuilders Without Borders initially from Tim Gardner. And it says Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico Pro. And then it says, unfortunately, this event has been canceled. Warmest regards, T Gardner. So incredibly unfortunate. Um, I feel bad for Stan Delonjou because I really had the belief that Stan would actually come in and win this show, um, depending on who else was competing, obviously. But Stan's looking great. He's going to, obviously, he says, moving on to uh, it says, uh, P Betty Pariso's show, uh, USA Fit Games Orlando Pro July 1st. So I don't know how long after that is. I don't know if it's the next show straight after or what it is. But Hopefully, Stan Delonjou comes in and wins that one. But unfortunately, we've lost one of the contests on the IFB Pro schedule. Next story is on Dennis James. I saw this and I was worried. It says, guess I won't be flying home tomorrow morning. Sunday night, I ended up in a hospital here in Germany where I was diagnosed with pneumonia. Thank God for great hospitals and doctors. So glad to hear that Dennis James got the care and he's doing okay and he's going to be able to come home. But incredibly unfortunate for Dennis. But uh, sending my love, well wishes out to big Dennis James, and I uh, hope he's able to get back to the States as soon as possible, but at least he's back in Germany. He knows Germany. I believe he's originally from Germany, and uh, at least it's not in some random country in uh, a third world country or something like that. So shout out to Dennis James. Now we've got an Aussie in the updates today, a guy that you might not have heard of as yet, and his name's Calm Hines. He's got an awesome physique. When Brett Wilkin came out to Australia, uh, he was in training camp. He's coached by Matt Jansen, uh, the same as Brett Wilkin as well, and says digging in, making shapes. I wanted to highlight his physique because his waist is so tiny. That front lat spread, it's a pity for him that the front lat spread is not a mandatory pose in the classic physique, but I think he's going to do very well uh, coming into this show. Does he need more mass overall probably in the classic as a pro? Maybe, but... I think he's going to make a great debut because he's got a really small waist. He's doing the Pittsburgh Pro, by the way. So he's about, what is it now, four and a half weeks out of that show. This photo was from two days ago, but ultra, ultra impressive. And uh, he's a taller guy as well. So I think he's going to do well in his pro debut as long as he brings that conditioning in enough. And it looks like it's coming in a lot more of late. I think he's going to do very well. But let me know your thoughts on Callum Hines and if he can be a future star of a classic physique as a pro now. Our next physique update is from Ross Flanagan, the owner of Flavor Gang. Five and six weeks out, so he must be doing the New York Pro and the Cali Pro as well. And he is looking ultra, ultra impressive. I mean, I am very impressed with the improvements Ross Flanagan's made to his physique. He's got a small waist. I mean, last year, his physique wasn't where, it, where I suppose... He wanted to be. I was impressed with him overall, but I understand why now seeing these physique updates, why he wasn't happy with what he brought to the stage last year. He said it was a disaster or something to that nature. He's 249.4 pounds. He's looking right on track to bring it to the stage in terms of conditioning. 
And if he's able to bring that with the added fullness to his physique, I mean, his lines are in his glutes right now. So um, I think he's going to do very, very well. Let me know what you guys think of Ross Flanagan because I think he's going to make a big improvement this year and I think he's going to do very, very well. And he could be that dark horse as well for these shows. He's going to be competing at the Cali Pro against Tonio Burton. And check out this one-year transformation in Tonio's back. So this was last year, supposedly, and this is this year. I mean, he did well last year. He beat out Justin Rodriguez in a show. Um, that was obviously a little bit later last year, but still... Tony Burton has made huge improvements. He's working with a new coach, Classic Blum, as he's known on Instagram. And as far as I know, Tony is going to be staying with him. And it's going to be like almost how Oscar Arden did it with Kai Green back in the day. And I'm very, very excited to see that. I think it's going to be awesome. And shout out to you guys for getting in the comments too. The Red Loop, Big Zave, cheers from Toronto. What's up, my man? Uh, and also Michael Hernandez. What's up, Mike from New York City? Sub Xavier. So, Michael, thank you guys for getting in the comments live as well. And, uh, yeah, leave your comments, and I'll give you guys a shout-out as I do this video. Now, Keon Pearson, he's been putting up updates pretty regularly out on his uh, Instagram page. And when Keon puts out updates, it means he's confident with how he's looking. And he's looking really good in the latest updates that he's put up. So let's take a look at them because I've been really impressed. Because Keon hasn't sort of maintained this sort of size and this sort of condition in an off-season scenario, at least from what I've seen before. He's definitely bigger than he's been in the past. And I think that he sees now that that 212 Olympia is in reach. And really, who doesn't want to see a guy like Keon Pearson win the 212 Olympia? That sort of physique with that tiny waist, huge arms, legs are improving. Conditioning seems to get be getting better show to show. I mean, he brought it at last year's Olympia, especially compared to what he's brought in the past. So... I think Keon Pearson is going to do incredibly well this year, as long as, you know, it's time after time everyone says it. If the conditioning is there, Keon is going to be absolute trouble, and it seems like he's added the size necessary because, you know, if he can't, you know, bring the same level of conditioning as some of these other guys, if it's just not in his wheelhouse in terms of the dryness and things like that, then what does he have to do? Keep that shape the same and add a little bit more muscle, and it might even accentuate his shape even more, which is hard to believe. But he has room to move in that 212, at least from his past showing. So Keon Pearson, I mean, look at that off-season. Uh, here we go. Morning cardio abs, keeping it tight at 221 pounds, 18 weeks out, working with Patrick Tour, and he's doing a fantastic job with Keon Pearson. And you can see it in his physique right now. But let me know your thoughts. Can Keon Pearson win the 2022 212 Olympia title? All right, now let's look at this 20-year-old freak. So this guy here, uh, Nihat, oh, I don't know if that's how you actually pronounce his name. I've got it written down. It is, uh, I wrote it down somewhere. Can't quite find it now. But regardless, I believe that's his name there. Yep, Nihat Kea. I'm going to roll that. He's from Turkey, and he's an absolute freak. Look at this, 20 years old. He's eight weeks out. I believe he's doing the Morocco uh, Pro Qualifier. It's on June 10th to 11th. And this guy... I mean, normally when you see a guy like this, now, let's go through a few of the photos. I mean, he's got those two there. You go instantly like, he must have a really weak back or something of that nature. Or he's got weak legs, but then you see the legs and they look phenomenal. And they're so rounded. The shape is so nice. It's fresh muscle. But if he's able to get this in condition, I mean, look at his delts. He's got cannonball delts, great arms, tight midsection. He's just going to need to bring that hardness to the stage, which, you know, as a young guy, he might not have that muscle maturity. But what he lacks in muscle maturity makes up for in roundness and shape and lines. And just so impressed with the look on this guy at 20 years of age. I mean, I can't remember the last time I've seen a 20-year-old look like this. This was from four days ago. So eight and a half weeks out. And I imagine he's just going to get crazier and crazier as the prep goes on. So... Very, very impressed with this guy. I cannot wait to see him in the pro league. And now this was posted two weeks ago. I'm assuming this must be a much older photo, but the gains this guy has made, I mean, he looks pretty good there. He's looking much better there. Now let's look at his story because I saw another photo where he looks ultra impressive as well. Uh, there you can see leg day done. Look at his legs. He's got cross striations in his out of quad. His quads look pretty hard. They're filled out. They look insane. And uh, very, very excited to, for this guy to, you know, most likely turn pro in eight and a half weeks' time. And uh, to see what he does as a pro, 
I mean, the gains he's probably making year after year or maybe day after day at this point, he's going to be pretty crazy, I think, this year. But let me know your thoughts. Can this guy be a future Mr. Olympia? Because judging by his shape and his uh, recent updates, it's hard to imagine this guy, you know, isn't right up there in the pro league eventually as long as he keeps his head screwed on straight and he stays at it. Now, our next update, I did not feature this in yesterday's updates when I put it on the thumbnail, so apologies to you guys. I made a mistake there, but Phil Heath looking damn impressive and we've got his documentary, some information on that coming up as well. And I mean, look at his physique. He's got great traps, other delts down a little bit, yes. Could that be age? Could it just be the fact that he hasn't been going all out with his training. It could be either of those things. Um, I'm sure if he got back into competing shape, his delts would come up. Everything would, you know, mass-wise everywhere else would get bigger. And if he's able to keep the waist tight while doing that, Phil Heath could certainly make a comeback. And I don't want to make this all about him making a comeback, but very, very impressive. He put the caption as well. This was on his story. It says, new week, more progress to make. So he's wanting to make progress on his this physique. So... Whether that means getting bigger, whether that means getting leaner, whether it means trying to change just the overall composition of his body, I don't know. Um, but I'd love to get Phil Heath on for an interview at some point, but who knows if that will happen. Now, Phil Heath, Breaking Olympia, the DVD that's coming out, the documentary that's coming out, it's set to be released this year. He did an interview with Bob Ciccarelli, which I'll feature on the screen very, very soon. And uh, the documentary... It appears like it's won awards. So Phil, in this latest documentary, mentioned on Bob Chigurh, hey, we've got Lee Priest in the chat. <laughs> What's up, Lee? Yo, yo, yo. Um, but yeah, Phil Heath, this documentary, says right here on the screen, four Rosie Award nominations. Now, I don't know what Rosie Awards are, but I have read online that it has been at film festivals, it's gotten awards and all that sort of stuff. So pretty cool. Cannot wait to see this movie, uh, documentary, whatever you want to call it whatever it is, but it's on the story of Phil Heath. So I'm excited to see it. Um, when you look up online as well, I'll share my screen just one more second and we'll get what Phil has to say about it when it's going to be released and all that as well. Um, but it seems like, at least you can read there on the screen, there's a few things on it. It says it's a 2022 documentary, but it has not yet been released, obviously, um, for the greater public to see. It's got a Rotten Tomatoes page, uh, no ratings as yet, but you see cast and crew, you see Phil Heath, and you see Dwayne Johnson. So I assume The Rock's either producing this or he's in the movie, maybe doing some commentary. I'm not too sure, but you can see some photos here, or at least screen grabs. It's related to the movie, maybe just the back of Phil's head, <laughs> apart from those ones. Just different, there we go, Breaking Olympia, the Phil Heath story. So it looks cool. I don't know what level or what platform this will be released on, but I think it's going to be a cool thing to see. But let's go to Phil and Bob Ciccarello talking about this on Bob Ciccarello's Voice of Bodybuilding channel. We have our documentary called uh, Breaking Olympia. It's already won a film festival award in Florence, Italy, and it's already been picked up by a major Hollywood studio. Can't tell you which one, but it's the first of its kind to actually get a studio release. So when's that coming this year. Come on, Phil. So he brings me on. And Where's he the thought inside he was a... scoop that you're looking for here at the VOB? You is want a release date? Is it this year? Is it... it is this year. Okay, so it's, it's this year. So everything that I'm telling you is this year. So we're doing that. Of course, I've been. Uh... So it's cool we got confirmation that this is coming out this year because. Everyone's been wondering, like, is that happening anymore? You know, is it is it dead? Is it one of those things that went away because Phil didn't win the Olympia in his comeback? But we've seen it now. Phil Heath is, you know, this documentary is coming out, Breaking Olympia. I don't know. There's a poll up right now. Um, are you Will you pay money to go see Phil's... Uh, what did I put? I'll check the poll, actually, because I can't quite remember what I put as the poll. Let me open it up. Hopefully it doesn't play the noise back at you guys when I first open it. But um, I'm excited to see it personally because he said it's been picked up by a major Hollywood studio. Um, and, okay, the question is, vote now if you haven't voted as yet. Yet, if you are watching live, will Phil... Oh, speared on me. Will Phil Heath's Breaking Olympia documentary be a hit in the bodybuilding industry? 72% of you are saying yes and 28% are saying no. I think it will be good. I think it will be awesome. And uh, very much looking forward to seeing that one personally. But uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments as well on that one. 
I'll get back to your comments and I'll go over a few of those now. So Lee is Lee's the most active. He's the MVP of the chat today. Um, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> Rosie Awards, Rosie O'Donnell. I don't know if they're Rosie O'Donnell Awards. <laughs> and then uh, Michael Nandez and fans loving it. Um, oh, I don't know if it's going to be released there, Lee, but um, you, you never know. <laughs> you never know. Could be a spicy one. Edward Gillison, Daddy Lee. Um, uh, Dan Birch, why is everything Bob Chick says so cringe? I'll be getting Bob Chick on uh, one of these episodes once again soon. Um, here we go. We've got the red loop. Did Tonio mention his current weight? He looks super swole. I don't know if he did mention his current weight. I'm going to go back to that. I'll, I'll have a look for you uh, because you did ask... It's not there, but actually, there's a video update. Let me share this with you guys. This is only from a day ago. I actually missed this. Um, let me go back and share my screen. There we go. So you can see Tony Burton now says five more weeks to be great. So he's obviously focused and targeted in on that Cali Pro. So I don't think that Tony is going to be going for anything else. He's not going to go for New York, which I think is a mistake personally. He looks like he definitely could. His physique looks fantastic. Lee, if you're in the comments still, let me know what you think of Tony Burton's physique because I think that front lat spread, I mean, he's getting crazier and crazier. I think we're going to be talking about Tony Burton as one of the top sort of guys in the Open at some point because he's a Mr. Olympia competitor last year in his first year out of the 212s, won a pro show. I imagine another year, I mean, what he's looking in this update is absolutely insane. So I'm very excited for Tony Burton. And shout out Michael Doherty too. I'm late. I'm going to start from the beginning. Good man, good man. Give it a like, comment, all that good stuff. Then Mike, uh, Michael Hernandez saying, I wish Justin Compton was still competing. Absolutely. Um, I wish he was too because he had a great physique for sure. I don't know what happened to Justin Compton, whether it was help related or if it was just that he fell out of love with it. I'm not too sure, but I think I heard something related to help, but I don't want to mention that in case that is wrong. In the red loop, yep, Tonio was doing the 212 the other year. Yeah, it's crazy. And... He was struggling to make that 212. Really, he's an open bodybuilder that was in a 212 class and doing pretty damn well in that 212 class as well. But I think going forward, Tonio is destined, obviously, for the Open. And I think he's destined to be a top 10, not only a top 10 Olympian. I think he's destined to be a top five Olympian. And potentially, he's one of those guys that is not even being considered as a future Mr. Olympia. But put this guy next to Derek Lunsford in a couple of years and Hardy Chupin and those guys. I think we're gonna. This is gonna be the next sort of Dexter Jackson. Hey, Lee Priest, these shows need a co-host. Hint, hint. Lee, I'll get you on for sure, one hundred percent. We'll have to do something. But I just feel like you might make me lose my channel potentially. <laughs> but we'll do something over the next couple of days and get you on one of these uh, daily bodybuilding news lives for sure. And let me know in the comments as well. Do you want to see Lee Priest on daily bodybuilding news live? Let me know. It says uh. B, B smokes, Derek. <laughs> Chicken. <laughs> it's just that I don't want my channel gone. <laughs> I know that's going to probably force you to say everything that's probably wrong under the sun. But uh, yeah, anyway. <laughs> anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap this one up. Thank you so much for getting in the comments. Yeah, there you go. Mighty Nathaniel saying he does want to see Lee on there. So there we go. Yeah, the people have spoken. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for tuning in live and also for everyone tuning in and watching this later on as well. There we go. Michael Hernandez. Yep. Lee Priest all day, please, for sure. But um, rap, <laughs> I speak the truth. You do. You do. 100%. Anyway, we're wrapping this one up. This is it for myself. I can pretty much say for Lee Priest as well. <laughs> this is desktop bodybuilding. Guys, we are...